What's going on Guardians? Sly here and thanks for checking out another Destiny video. It's freshly 4am here in North Carolina and it is also Friday so you definitely know what that means. This slippery bastard known as Zur is somewhere around here and we need to go see if that dude has my helmet or my gauntlets. But before we do that, I hope everyone out there is having an awesome week so far and welcome to the start of the weekend. Spring is most definitely in the air, and here in North Carolina, it's been spring for about the last month already. It's already in the 80s during the day, which is absolutely insane, especially since it was just February a couple days ago. And with spring, that means E3 will soon be on hand. Pretty sure the time has come to start announcing plans for Destiny 2, so I cannot wait for that. But in the meantime, I'll just keep pushing my normal videos along and wait until I can dive headfirst into some new Destiny content. As always, I hope all of you out there will join me as it happens. But first, let's do the Thursday thing. It's Friday, March 3rd, and this is your Destiny Rise of Iron Weekly Thursday Guide. Alright, so I hope everyone out there is having an awesome Iron Banner week. And by the way, if you're interested in any Mass Effect stuff, I've been making tons of video about that, which I'm sure you guys have seen. But I'm also starting my next playthrough of Mass Effect 3, which I'll be posting here hopefully today. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. It'll probably be up here in, I don't know, five or six hours from by the time you see this. But there's a lot more on the way, including the Mass Effect trailer coming out today. So definitely, definitely looking forward to that. All right, so upon landing, as you can see, this dude is definitely here at the tower. He's got his gang tag check, purple flowers, you know it. So where is this dude? Well, my friends, let me tell you. Tower North, my friends. As you can see by the people in the menu over there, he is obviously there. So, upon landing, just stick to the left, head up the stairs, and over to Tower North, over towards the speaker. You'll find him across from the speaker, actually blending in with a large door in the background. Also, I just wanted to say for the hundred of you left that are still watching this video, thank you guys so much for keeping on tuning in. I know I've lost a lot of viewers since I've only done, you know, the reset guide and Zer's Day. But with so little going on in Destiny, I'm just trying to eke along until the big release comes along. So thank you guys for keeping up with me, and I will still promise to deliver Destiny videos as soon as everything becomes rele relevant again. So you guys are awesome. All right, well, let's take a look. And come on, something good, something good. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, as usual, we're going to take a look at everything in detail, but first, let's just look over everything briefly and see what we got. So, first up, we have a Legacy Year 1 Helmet Engram, Year 1's doo-doo, don't touch it. Next, we have the Insurmountable Skull Fort for the Titan. Following that, for the Hunter, the ATS-8 Tarantella, and then for the Warlock, the Void Fang Vestments once again. As for the weapon this week, it is the 4th Horseman, which is pretty awesome. As for the Curios, we have the Sparrow Upgrades, the Blue Plasma Drive, and then the Purple Void Drive. Then we have the 3-pack of Heavy Sins for 1 Strange Coin, the 10-pack of Heavies for 3, 5-pack, three, 3 of Coins, and the 3-pack of Glass Needles. And then, of course, the Material Exchange down at the bottom is a bunch of doo-doo and then awesomeness. Alright, well, let's dive into some details, starting with the Insurmountable Skull Fort for the Titan. Exotic perk here is called Improved Transfusion. Kills with Storm Fist immediately trigger health regeneration. Respawn with full melee energy. Also, you gain a second melee charge. You have 40-42 intellect strength, and of course, you could bump one of those up a little bit higher. Secondary perk, hands-on, bonus super energy from melee kills, and second thoughts, bonus super energy from special weapon kills, and then finally, one of the terrible helmet upgrades, invigoration, gain bonus melee energy on orb pickup. Now, the cool thing about this helmet is that it gives you a second melee. It can give you health regen, but Titans can already do that if you spec for it. So, use the second melee for something else, you know, like, I don't know, double melting point. That would be what I'd use this for, but not really for the uh, for the Striker Titan. It's just, it can already do it. I know you free up an extra node, but why settle for that when you can go for much more damage with melting point? It worked great in Golgoroth, and I'm sure it, you find tons of other uses for it as well. Alright, moving on to the second exotic today. We have for the Hunter... The ATS-8 Tarantella. Now the exotic perk here is called the Tarantella. Imagine that. Take reduced arc damage from minions of darkness, arc grenades, and arc blade. Recharge faster. We have 57, 51 intellect discipline, and of course you can bump one of those up a little higher. Now like most chess pieces, they give you ammo. And here you can get extra auto rifle ammo or extra sidearm ammo. 
Now at the end, like other chess pieces, you have defensive options, and for this part, you can get arc burn defense and reduce incoming arc burn damage, or arc armor, increased armor when using an arc based subclass. The ATS-8 Tarantilla is actually pretty awesome guys, you get your arc blade and grenades back faster, although is it worth an exotic slot? Yes and no. I mean, you know, skip grenades, they're still super super strong, and they track ri ridiculous if you have the, you know, the gauntlets on, but these get your super back faster, and while it's not like stupid incredibly fast, it is definitely noticeable, and that is a huge advantage in something like competitive PvP. But, Blade Dancers also have a weak point in their super as well, so you definitely have to know what you're doing. If you don't have this, it's definitely a buy, guys. This is a great chess piece, and if you, if you use a Blade Dancer a lot, you can definitely get used to having it come back faster. Alright, next up, let's take a look at one of the oldest chess pieces for the Warlock, the Void Fang Vestments, and these have been sold for like, I don't know, like, like twice a month it seems like. Exotic perk for this bad boy is called Hungering Void. Spawn with full grenade energy and your Axion Bolt Grenades spawns an additional Seeker. Now we have 60-53 Intellect's Discipline and of course you can bump one of those up a little higher. Now just like the Tarantella, we have the two same things here. First row is ammo, we get extra scout rifle ammo or extra fusion rifle ammo. And then the last row has to deal with defense. We have solar burn defense, reduces incoming solar burn damage, great for a solar burn nightfall. And then Void Armor, Increased Armor when using a Void based subclass. The Void Fang Vestments are still one of my favorite, you know, Void Walker chess pieces. Especially when it comes to competitive PvP, you get three Seekers, there's three people, and you use it just like a, you know, a fireball grenade. You throw it down, shatter their shields, and then go in for the kill. It works very, very well, and they, they track, like, relentlessly. Now, there used to be a glitch that if you saw one coming to you, you could actually use the sit, like, the sit emote and it would just spin above your head until it would go away. The problem is that leaves you there defenseless. So it's usually best just to take the grenade and run for cover. But either way, it's still a great looking chess piece. I've always loved these. The problem is it's getting a little old. So I'd rather see something new, but still just like everything else for a Void Walker, if you don't have this in your inventory, you're missing a crucial piece of equipment, especially since it gives you a grenade upon each spawn. So for Trials, for instance, every time a round starts, you have grenades. You can immediately throw them. That is a big part of strategy. So definitely grab this if you don't have them. All right, guys, then moving on to the last thing this week, we have the beastly shotgun known as the Fourth Horseman. Now, it's an exotic for a couple of reasons. First, because it is fully automatic, as you can see right here. Thunderer, this weapon can be fired in full auto mode. And also because of two other regular options. First, we have Final Round. Last round in this magazine deals bonus damage. And also on top of that, we have Return to Sender, which kills with this weapon have a chance to grant bonus ammo in the magazine. So at times, you can just hold the trigger down and get way more ammo than you usually do. And especially since the last one will always give you extra, uh, extra damage, and Return to Sender procs that, you'll get like back to back to back bonus damage and it can literally just shred opponents. Not so great in PvP, it's fun to use in PvP, but this is more a PvE weapon. As for barrel upgrades, we have CQB Ballistics, Accurized Ballistics, and then Field Choke. And for the middle row here, we have Fitted Stock, Hand Loaded, and Speed Reload. Now, this, because you're not going into PvP, I really wouldn't worry about range too much about this, guys. Now, of course, it's always better to have a little more range than, you know, what you see here. But the reload on this thing is insanely slow. Now, this is, I think it's best used with a Titan that has War Machine on for its Ward of Dawn. You can just pump your ammo back in this thing. And if it's something like, you know, a Nightfall with Arc Damage and Airborne, you can jump with this thing on float with like you know your exotic helmet and then just a shred bosses inside of your ward of dawn especially if you have armor on so pop a bubble over a boss have the imperium bellicose on because you get airborne and arc damage grab this thing jump up in the air aim and then just go to town three people can take down a boss in literally like two minutes using that strategy don't leave the bubble because of course it's armor as soon as you leave you're defenseless but you it's tons of fun you might die the first one or two times but it's totally worth it. This weapon is sounds great, it looks great, it's fun to use, but the reload is insanely slow. So my advice would be try to find as much reload as you can get. Now if you want to use it in PvP, then of course you go for something like Accurized Ballistics and Hand Loaded. But if you're not, then I recommend going all, all reload for PvP, or PvE, I'm sorry. Alright guys, well, that about does it for this week. Unfortunately, still no Astrosite Verse or Ophidian Aspects. I was hoping since the hotfix, maybe they updated Zer with you know, a better loot pool. 
but it still seems like RNG is kicking me in the ass, and it's laughing every step of the way. <laughs> Alright guys, well that's it for this week. As always, thank you all so much for watching. As usual, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, at SlyNation, or even on Facebook, at SlyNationGaming. I'm trying to get that back in the loop, fill it out some more, so if you want to check it out, that would be greatly appreciated. As always, keep an eye out for more videos coming out of Sly Nation here very soon. But until then, this is your boy Sly, and I will catch you all next time.